Uh, so business would choose an 831B plan if they recognize that they have exposures of risk that are outside of their uh, standard uh, general liability and workers' compensation insurance programs. 831Bs are fantastic in identifying risk areas that are underinsured or not insured at all. Uh, a lot of insurance programs also have exclusions that specifically uh, exclude various types of risk from their existing policies. So having an 831B or micro-captive option is benefiting me as, as a user of an 831B because I have an insurance program that exceeds the, the traditional insurances that I, I generally go get. So as an accounting firm, I participate in an 831B. Part of that program that I use is to be able to bolster my general liability and errors and emissions insurance. And I do it in a way where I'm also be able to participate participate in, and I suppose the upsides, if risk exposures are low enough, or if I'm able to you know, not have claims in a particular year, I also experience some upside because I'm also an individual that owns the insurance company, which is kind of a unique situation. So I think two big benefits we've got to be mindful of when it comes to 831Bs or micro-captives is the ability to mitigate risk as well as a strong tax deferral position. As a CPA, as a guy that owns an accounting firm, and as a user of a micro-captive, uh, the tax mitigation is certainly one of the big ones that I focus on. Uh, the ability to be able to kick the, the, the tax can down the road a little bit longer and be able to keep all of my dollars working for me in both a risk mitigation strategy as well as a way to grow wealth is a strong, solid plan. I've got a lot of clients who face, who work in food industries. I've got a lot of clients who work in areas where there's uh, a lot of product liability. I've got a lot of clients that work in places where there's um, you know, a variety of, of enterprise risk management issues. And to be able to have a program that bolsters that while also kicking the tax can uh, down the road and deferring the tax, it's, it's a win-win. You know, there, I know there's a lot of accounting firms out there that probably are not as up to speed on 831B micro captives. I was there at 1.2. Uh, I, I acknowledge though the fact that this is an area that needs to have a lot of careful attention, a lot of careful planning and careful uh, dissecting of the pros and the cons. I spent a tremendous amount of time working with a number of different uh, captive managers uh, and, and making sure that I understood the program I spent a fair amount of time researching the court cases and understanding how does the IRS really view uh, you know, captives, um, how, how are the courts deciding these cases on captives, and I think that as I spent that kind of time doing that, I found myself feeling far more comfortable with the program overall. 831B micro captives are around to stay. Uh, it's embedded in the Internal Revenue Code. It continues to be supported by Congress. Uh, recently, Congress uh, you know, pushed the limits up on the 831Bs. There continues to be enough support uh, amongst the legislature as well as the courts that 831Bs aren't going to go away. Um, and so if you're, not, if you're not up to speed on what these are and how to make these uh, a great tool and an option for your clients, someone else is going to. As a business owner, and this is coming from the position of someone who also does an 831B plan myself, uh, I, I think you should seriously consider 831Bs primarily because of the, of the risk mitigation tools. But as a CPA, it's hard for me to ignore the blaring tax uh, you know, benefits that are coming down the pike from this as well. And so if, you have, if you're in a situation where you have significant tax exposures, we can't ignore the elephant in the room that there are some strong tax benefits that are associated with 831Bs. We shouldn't be afraid of it. We shouldn't, we should, we shouldn't run away from it simply because there are good tax benefits. Um, I, I would just implore you to take a moment and understand it and try to learn more about it. And, and I think if you do that and you do it with your eyes wide open, looking at, at all of the different viewpoints that are out there, you're going to come to the conclusion that I came to for myself that it is a strong risk profile, uh, it is a strong risk management tool, but it also is a strong tax tool for me as well. So as a CPA, as I talk to all of my clients, when I see companies that are successful, that have excess cash flows, that have uninsured risks, that are looking for ways to mitigate their tax exposure, those types of organizations, in my view, are an ideal fit for an 831B microcaptive. SRA is a good partner because they do what they say they're going to do. They're responsive. They're uh, timely in everything that they're going to be doing for us. Uh, I think they're and I, and I think they're a fair their 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 their, their approach to um, how they approach 831Bs is is unlike most other uh, uh, captive managers that I've worked with out there. Specifically, having a tool that you can work with on the smaller side for 831Bs doesn't exist with other captive managers. I don't have the ability to go to any other captive manager and have a client who might have a good fit for say $100,000 to $150,000 premium and have that economically make sense for the client. Uh, SRA has a program for that and, and that was one of the big reasons why I approached them as well.